Cortisol is like a nuclear weapon. It's super volatile. If it's pointed in the right direction, it's awesome and it actually helps you burn tons of fat. But if it's pointed in the wrong direction, it causes you to store tons of belly fat. Okay, cortisol will make you store belly fat. It absolutely will, but it's all about context. Cortisol, when under the right circumstances, is very effective at helping us burn fat, but under the other circumstances, it makes us store fat, and it happens to make us store fat specifically in our belly region. And when you understand what's happening, you can have good ways to avoid that from happening, but also you can just have a solid knowledge so you don't just always hate on cortisol, but you just know a little bit more of what to eat. So we're gonna break that all down. We got new videos coming out almost every single day nowadays. I want you to go ahead and hit that red subscribe button so you can always get good fat loss information, but then hit that bell icon. That bell icon's gonna make it so you can turn on notifications and know whenever I go live and never miss a new video. Down in the description, there's a link to check out Lakanto. So Lakanto is an awesome, low-carb, zero-calorie sweetener. So it's something that I use all the time. Like I use their drops when I'm making any kind of apple cider vinegar drink, or I put their drops in my yogurt, my cottage cheese, just to add a little bit of flavor. So there's special discounts for those of you that are watching this video. So I wanna make sure that you check them out. Lakanto is awesome, known them for a long time, and they're a big sponsor of this channel. So after you watch this video, make sure you click on that link and check them out. But in the interim, let's get down to some belly fat science for a second. Okay, so like I said, cortisol is both good and bad. Okay, it helps you burn fat, and we're gonna talk about that in a second, but really the ultimate job of it is to get our stress hormones elevated and get us to respond to a given stressor. So believe it or not, cortisol is actually anti-inflammatory. Cortisol reduces inflammation in your body, whereas most people think it increases it. It reduces it because it's a response to stress and a response to inflammation. That's generally why people that are overweight or obese have high levels of cortisol because obesity and being overweight in general is already considered an inflammatory condition. So when you have a lot of inflammation, you're gonna have more cortisol and thus begins the vicious cycle. But we're gonna save that discussion for another day. I wanna talk about how belly fat actually accumulates as a result of cortisol and also how it doesn't. So at the tissue level, cortisol concentration is dictated by a specific enzyme. This enzyme is called 11-hydroxysteroid dehydrogenase. And this enzyme basically takes inactive cortisone and converts it to active cortisol. Now, this enzymatic activity is happening within our fat. It just so happens that we have four times as many cortisol receptors in our visceral fat tissue and our abdominal adipose tissue. So we have more cortisol receptors and more enzymatic activity happening through our belly than anywhere else in the body. So that's exactly why when, again, under the wrong circumstances, cortisol absolutely 100 freaking lutely will cause you to store more belly fat, okay? So at the tissue level, it's just a peripheral response. It's not everything that's happening with cortisol. So let's break it down a little bit more. So cortisol actually helps you burn fat, but at the same time, it causes you to store fat. You see, cortisol elevates something known as lipoprotein lipase. Lipoprotein lipase is the epicenter for fat storage. Lipoprotein lipase turns on the fat cell's ability to store more fat. We do not want this on, okay? Now, on the other side of the equation, cortisol also turns on hormone-sensitive lipase, which is the master enzyme that's responsible for burning fat. How does cortisol have so much control? That's why I said cortisol is like a nuclear weapon. It's so volatile. It is so powerful at helping us either burn fat or store fat, but it's again, all about context. You see, in a fed state, when we are eating food, when we're not fasted, cortisol reacts and triggers more lipoprotein lipase. However, in a fasted state or when we're working out, Cortisol elevates hormone-sensitive lipase and has fat-burning properties. So exercise and fasting take cortisol and accentuate its good properties, whereas eating takes cortisol and accentuates its bad properties. So does that mean you should just never eat? No, not at all. But you need to understand that when you do work out, your cortisol levels will go high. But your cortisol levels that are going high are helping you burn fat. I used to have people tell me all the time that you shouldn't work out more than 20 minutes because your cortisol levels get high. Like, what? No, cortisol is good. Cortisol is going to help us burn fat in the right context. Now, cortisol is a response to stress. Physical stress, fasting stress, workout stress, mental stress. 
So where cortisol becomes a problem is when it's a response to mental stress more than anything, and it's being combined with insulin. Because remember, in a fed state, when you're actually eating, if cortisol is elevated, that's when it turns on lipoprotein lipase. So if you stress eat, you are going to store a lot of belly fat. Okay, one, because cortisol is gonna already be elevated and it's combined with insulin because you're eating, but two, because you have more receptors in your abdomen. So what fat does get accumulated from that cortisol response is directly going to your belly fat. So don't stress eat, that's like the cardinal rule. Okay, stress work out, stress meditate, stress have sex, whatever, but don't stress eat because it is going to be a problem and I cannot overemphasize that enough. Now when we look at the positive again, when cortisol is combined with growth hormone, we have a positive response. Or when cortisol is coupled with catecholamines like adrenaline or epinephrine, again, a positive response. Well, guess what? Those two things, growth hormone and catecholamines, are vastly elevated while we're fasting. So there's no surprise that while you fast, your cortisol levels are gonna go high. So it's so funny when people bag on fasting and they say, oh, well, it's raising your cortisol levels, so it's actually gonna make you store fat. Remember the old commercial? I can't even remember what it was for, but I remember it growing up, just seeing it all the time, where it's just like, cortisol is the starvation hormone. That is such nonsense. Like, yes, it is, but it's not causing you to store fat like that commercial or infomercial used to say, okay? It doesn't make it so that when you're fasting and you don't eat, your cortisol elevates and what you do eat goes to your your stomach. No, not at all. Only if you are chronically stressed is cortisol gonna cause a problem. Remember, point that nuclear weapon where you want it to go. So then we look quickly at the combination of cortisol and food. We have to look at insulin for just a second. So insulin combined with cortisol is one of the worst things possible. So again, it comes back to having high levels of stress and then also having a caloric surplus. That caloric surplus is going to trigger, of course, an exacerbated response. Now, when insulin is present, the tissues are even more susceptible to lipoprotein lipase. So when you eat in general, in the absence of cortisol, you go into an absorptive mode. But if cortisol is there, you're in an ultra-absorptive mode. And again, here's the order in which it would store. It stores in your visceral fat first, like underneath your skin, underneath, like around your organs. Then it goes to sub-Q abdominal, so the visible like kind of abdominal fat in our belly. And then it goes to femoral, like in the legs and other areas, in that order. So visceral, belly fat, the rest of the body. So yes, you will store it in a specific area. So ultimately, what do you do? Again, it comes down to just managing stress in a way that actually works. And the biggest cardinal thing here is don't stress eat, period. Find another outlet. But you needed to have an understanding of how belly fat works in the first place. So hopefully this was an A to Z guide in that response. As always, make sure you're keeping it locked into my channel, and I'll see you in the next video.